I have just done a Zoom section with a school and the kids got a lot of questions that I didn't have enough time to answer. I was, I'm so happy the kids are so interested in animals and curiosity is the key. The adults, when they grow up, they lose curiosity. That's the set part of growing up. Anyways, um, so now I want to do a video to answer the questions that I didn't have time to answer during my Zoom section with uh, FAP Summer School. All the kids were amazing. All right, so what are the questions? How old are you? What? <laughs> the f kids, you're too young. Not only girls, sometimes age is highly confidential for most of the adults. You see, I have beard, I have like beard, I have long beard. <laughs> I'm not young. Okay, that's all I can say. And I have seen a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm not quite young. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say. What type of animals are spiders? What type of animals are spiders? Good question. So, uh, spider spiders, and most people already know spiders are not insects because insects have six legs, spiders have eight legs, so spiders are not insects. But what exactly are they in classification? It's like mm, uh, insects are artful ports. But there are other artful ports that are not insects. They are arachnids, like spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. They are arachnids. What does nocturnal mean? Nocturnal means a lifestyle that, like, when you play games all night long and then they sleep all day that is a nocturnal lifestyle but in nature the animals that are nocturnal most people already know like bats uh, some snakes some geckos they are nocturnal animals they come out during nighttime and during daytime they sleep but many animals that people got confused is those crepuscular animals that they uh, come out during twilight but they do sleep during night time next question why you don't afraid the animals why am i not afraid of the animals i do i do i do fear right when i am in front of some big animals like when I was in Uganda I was in the jungle and then um, because we were looking for mountain gorillas in Uganda and we've been tracking for two hours before we found the first gorilla and then we were so happy and we were not supposed to get too close to them because first they are powerful Second, we don't want to disturb them. So I was trying to keep like um, at least 20 feet distance. And then there was this alpha male, silverback, like with the bicep like this big, that he came to me, literally grabbed my leg, pulled my pants, and wow at that moment i was not scared because that 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 was too quick i didn't have time to respond but i was like excited and a little bit scared because he is really powerful but i also understand that gorillas are not usually very aggressive animals usually some some gorillas can be very aggressive but usually gorillas are kind of not aggressive comparing to 
other African animals. So I was trying to be calm and, and luckily he was just playing with me. But I, I do feel fear when I'm in front of like huge animals like gorillas, lions, tigers that I have worked with. And, but when you're working with these animals, I would be very excited first. And then I would be totally focused on observing the animal's expression, the behaviors that I usually wouldn't have time to be scared. So I think this is when you are totally focused on something, then you are not scared of anything. That is the power of staying focused on something. What animal do you like most? My favorite animals. This is the hardest question ever. I cannot name just one favorite animal. I like the I like the variety, the the diversity of animals. When you look at animals, you look at how different they are in the shape, sizes, colors, everything. Then you understand how they have evolved from their ancestors millions of years and then how they are adapting to the environment right now. That is amazing. But if I had to say my favorite animal would be reptiles and if it's too wide, I would say one of them would be Komodo dragon. I love Komodo dragons. And before COVID, I would travel to Komodo Island like almost every year to visit them and study them. That's a very cool creature. Can axolotls actually regenerate their bodies? Yes, they do. And um, I think axolotls have become so popular these years because uh, a lot of kids are telling me about axolotls thanks to Minecraft or like Pokemon, something like that. And um, like before that, basically no one knew axolotls existed. So games and animate are very important to spread a positive image about the animals. So then now kids kind of love axolotls. That is a good thing. That's really cool. And axolotls can regenerate their body parts. That is how amazing they are. If they lost a leg, they can regenerate it. If they lost a tail, they can regenerate it back. Even if a part of the brain is damaged, they can regrow it. Amazing. But when they have to regrow their body parts, there is one circumstance. They have to be well fed because when they cannot find food, they don't have enough nutrition, they cannot regrow their body parts. How do pets eat, Mr. Tony? <laughs> how, the question is, how do pets eat, Mr. Tony? Is there a comma before Mr. Tony? Nope. No, no comma. Okay. Pets eat me. Mm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> if the question was with a comma, I would answer like, how do pets eat? That's a really difficult question. They put things in their mouth, basically. Uh, different animals eat different things, right? The herbivores eating plants, they would just like graze on the grass and they would eat it, put it in the mouth, they would bite on the grass, something like that. Carnivores eat meat and carnivores usually don't eat that meat. They are usually predators, so they have to hunt. They have to maybe chase after other animals and catch a prey or they sit and wait for the prey to come. So those are ambush predators. They sit and wait till the prey to come close to the mouth, then they will grab them all of a sudden. So different animals eat different food in a different way. Can a spider make spider wax? 
spiders spin webs. That's what they do. But not all spiders do that. Like tarantulas don't spin web, and some other spiders don't spin web. But most spiders spin a web to help them capture the prey. Why didn't the hedgehog quill me? The hedgehogs have a lot of quills on the back, right? And that is how they protect themselves in the wild. Uh, when I was handling the hedgehogs or porcupines or other spiky animals, they could be very spiky, right? When they are nervous, when they're scared, they could be very spiky. But when they are relaxed, they are kind of easier to handle. But when you handle something like that, you don't want to like pat them from tail to head. You want to move from head to tail, then all the quills will be pointing the same direction, then it would be easier. But when they're nervous, all the quills are pointing outward, then it would be very tricky to handle with bare hand because it hurts. Right? I just got used to the feeling somehow, but I still get hurt. I'm still a human. Right? And, um, that's it. Why is your hair like this? <laughs> it's not about the question is getting it's not about animals now. The question is like 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 for me now. My hair. I usually don't want to talk about anything other than animals, but because I got asked too often about my hair and stuff. Um yeah, I have dreadlocks and I'm not black, right? But Black people like me. All black people I know, they like me. When I was in Africa, they were so happy. They would, even like strangers would came to me and ask me how I did my hair with a smile on it. And we had so much fun talking about hair and stuff. Um, I would say I don't wear this hairstyle for the look because I like natural stuff. I appreciate natural things and this hairstyle is not the most natural hairstyles in the world it has no chemicals on it i didn't perm it and it's all natural and it reminds me of my life in the jungle so it's not about race it's not about your color if you believe in something you can have it if it's it's not hurting other people's feeling then you can have it and i'm so grateful that most of the African people I have met, they love me and they love my hair, right? But of course, there will be different like opinions, uh, uh, something about cultural appropriation. I understand that. But I didn't wear this hairstyle for the look. I just wanted to say, um, dreadlocks or similar hairstyles also existed in Asia with a long history together with Africa because Asia and Africa have a very close relationship back in the day. I truly appreciate and respect this culture and I practice my lifestyle naturally and then I want to have this kind of hair because hair grows. Why do we have to cut our hair? Because hair grows, right? Don't ask me why I grow my beard. Don't ask me why I grow my hair long. You should ask yourself, why do you cut your hair? Right? Because cutting your hair is some extra actions that you're doing. Like leaving it growing is not, right? And it's all natural. Just let it be. Be happy. Next question. Beetles leave for three to six months. How do they become adults so fast? Ah, some beetles have a very unique lifestyle. Like um, some beetles, some rhinoceros beetles, they, the females lay eggs, and then the eggs will be living in a tree for a long time, up to two or even three years, to grow into their adulthood, like a beetle, right? And then the adult beetle can only live for another couple months. That is very different.
from other animals lifestyle so they spend tons of time sleeping without doing anything just to growing up into adult then they only have a couple months to live the only purpose of like living in the adulthood is i guess it would be only for reproduction how many babies can a snake give birth at a time oh it really depends on how big the females are and also species like usually small species lay a few eggs and big species lay uh, like a big heavy gravid female can lay up to 50 eggs some species right so uh, some species don't even lay eggs like anacondas boas like those snakes they give birth to live young and then they can have a lot of live babies at a time. If the animal has no eyelids, how can we tell they are sleeping? <laughs> Very good one. Animals without eyelids. We can't imagine a life with eyes open 24-7. We can't imagine life like that, but like fish, snakes, most geckos, they have no eyelids. They can't even close their eyes. So even when sleeping, they have their eyes open. So sometimes when I looked at my snakes staying still, I can't even tell if they're sleeping or they're just staying still. Especially they sleep during daytime. So that is tricky, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't imagine life without being able to close my eyes. Right? So guys, remember, don't do staring contests with snakes. You definitely lose. Why the python's body is so fat while its head is so thin? Oh, good observation. So pythons have a different body shape. Like their body is usually more stout and with a slender neck. And then the head is like this. So the body shape kind of indicates what kind of prey they eat. Uh, pythons eat big prey so that they need a lot of space in the body. And snake's body is very interesting. They have their like hearts, lungs, intestines. But those organs are so different from humans and mammals. The hearts... Uh, relatively smaller the lungs even more interesting one lung is bigger than another lung and then both lungs are just slender and most part of the body is their intestines right because they have to swallow big prey and then the prey will be inside the body for days if not weeks then they will have to digest the prey for a very long time right so uh, they have big body because they eat big prey and the advantage of eating big prey is they don't have to eat every day so the bigger the snake the less often they eat so usually big pythons when they eat big prey they can survive without eating for months if not years right i have seen some snakes without eating for two years and still surviving but that's like an extreme case usually a few months not a problem for healthy snakes do you have a snowy owl not in hong kong uh, but i used to be taking care of snowy owls when i was in new york i wonder the animals live together in a cage or live alone okay the owl animals live in the enclosures not necessarily a cage because we are not a fan of using a cage but uh we would like to set up the enclosure mimicking their natural habitats and most animals like reptiles they have to live alone because most reptiles are not social animals they're solitary animals and they don't enjoy living together with other animals probably because that's not what they do 
in their natural habitats. So some animals live alone. Some animals live in group, like the iguanas, like the prehensile tail skinks, like the turtles. How do the snakes pee? How do snakes pee? Mm. Kids are always curious about two things, wee wee and poo poo. Um, snakes pee just like most other reptiles do. And um, they would just pee from their cloaca. And um, usually snakes are quite clean animals. When they have to defecate or urinate, they will try to not touch it after they finish their business. So if they had a choice, they would choose to like lift the tail, do their business, and then they will go away. They don't want to touch the pee or poop. So most people think snakes are dirty, filthy animals, but actually, no, they are pretty clean. Can chameleons do tail? Chameleons are lizards. Some lizards, like geckos, can drop their tail to distract the predators. But this is not what chameleons do. Chameleons' tail is very important to them because they have prehensile tails. All right. So they live in trees. Other than the legs, they would also have to use the tail to grab onto the tree branches. So the tail is a very important body part for chameleons, and they don't drop the tail usually. Why did you decide to be a zookeeper? I think he means zoologist. I love animals, right? Uh, there is not much else in my life other than animals. So if not working with animals, what else? So I chose to study zoology and arbitrology, going to their natural habitats is a gift and finding them is a bonus for me. What will eat snakes? What are the snakes predators? So snakes are predators themselves, but in nature, food chain is complex. So animals can have two different roles. You can be a predator and prey at the same time. So snakes could be preyed on by eagles, mongooses, meerkats love to eat snakes, even like, like smaller snakes. I have seen wild hedgehogs eating small snakes. And uh, some snakes eat other snakes, like the king cobras, and big lizards like monitor lizards eat snakes. There are actually many predators that would eat snakes. That's it for today. Good. I hope you have learned something and I'm here to share you my experiences. I'm not like a teacher. I don't just want to teach you. I want to inspire you. So I do have something that I don't know. That I'm still learning. So everyone has to keep learning and keep exploring every day, no matter how old you are. Don't lose your curiosity. So long.